Welcome, everyone, to another episode of Not Part of Your Scene Lightning Reviews. Um, I got my eggnog minus the egg. I guess just nog. And today, if you read the title, I'm just going to do a, a quick lightning reviews of the indie books and image books. I don't know if image is indie. I guess it is sort of. Sort of big indie. You know, do you trust big indie? You should be reading small indie. None of these are that small. They're all more popular indie titles. Uh, I guess I could have put Alterna Comics in there. I didn't put Scrimshaw in there. I want to read the whole thing first. Anyway, let's just get started because, you know, there's a decent stack of books. It's been two weeks. So, first off, uh, Euthanauts. I have now read uh, one through four. This is issue four. This is by Teeny Howard. Teeny Howard is a writer that I, um, I really like, although I don't know that I've read something that I really like, if that makes any sense. I think that she's going to be really good. So my first introduction with her, with her was uh, only very recently, so I, I just discovered her, was the Captain America annual. And when I read through it, it was okay. It was like a real standard story. It was like, uh, and I read her letter at the end about the person that it was based on, some relative she didn't know, but she was Roma. Uh, you know, Roma or I, I don't even know if this is derogatory but Roma Gypsy right so people that were also killed during World War II and just not in the large numbers that the, the Jewish population was and then I picked up Euthanauts and this is another good idea this is like space except you travel through death basically the back calls it a Bowie-esque punk goth space adventure which it's barely that uh, I don't know why they would do the Bowie thing just because of the Mars bullshit, whatever. Anyway, it, the book is pretty good. What really gets what, what really gets you to realize what Teeny Howard is doing, much like in that Captain America book, is uh, these interviews at the end about a death with a death professional. You sort of get a real view of what's happening in or what she wants to say in the book by reading the back matter. And while that's made me more interested in her, uh, it's also the thing where I wish that she would sort of capture that stuff that she explains in the back matter in the actual books so far. She also wrote, I think it was um, issue number two of that new Marvel Knight series. So I don't know how to really judge her or review that because it's Donny Cates' story. He's actually scripting one in, one in five or one in six and then other people are doing the, the legwork in the middle. Um, so, Euthanauts is still really cool, and I'm still going to read it. And uh, Teeny Howard, someone I'm waiting, you know, at some point she's going to just stop hitting singles. She's going to start knocking the ball out of the park. Uh, the next book is, oh, Firefly. It's not Firefly. This is an ad, but I should be reviewing this in this thing, and I don't know where that book is. This is Empty Man number two. This is a new Colin uh, Bun book. I did talk about or review number one or mention it somewhere. This continues on this story where... Uh, people have gotten this mental disease that seems to be contagious. And now here, some of the world is, starts being built. There's a, a government. You know, the government is someone that's involved that wants to try to quarantine this. There's some kind of cult. There's a little corporate thing going on. And there's another group that, you know, appears to maybe be, will be able to help. So you have these little conglomerates or groups or whatever all around and the story centers around a man who's hiding his wife who has the empty man virus or this psychosis kind of thing. And he doesn't want basically any of these groups to, that he knows about at least, to, to take her away. Uh, I like it. It's dark. It's scary. You know, it's gross. It's imaginative. So if you're into like a psychological horror, that's definitely a book to, to pick up and, and continue to read because the first two issues kept me around. Uh, this is this book is uh, this is a Black Mask book. So Black Mask has dealt with some strange stuff. At least the books that I've read. So this is this is no different. This is Snap Flash Hustle. This is by I'm not even sure who it's by. It's a writer I wasn't familiar with. Pat Shand is the writer. Artist is Emily Pearson. So this is uh, this sort of uh, deals with models, Instagram models, and sort of that exploitation in a way 
I thought where I thought it was going is to, if you guys ever watched that uh, documentary, Hot Girls Wanted, which would make you feel really sad for 18 year old, young 18 year old women that get into the porn industry. That's where this was headed, I thought. But it's sort of an Instagram model um, mixing in with uh, some like organized crime stuff. It's only the first issue, so you don't really get into it. But it, it is good, and and I'll I'll continue to buy it. I think this might be a, I think this is supposed to be a mini series anyway, which I like better for these kind of books. Uh, so let's go into you know internet models and exploiting women. Right to Rick and Morty and Dungeons and Dragons. So this book is easy to buy because it was just four issues and I'm a, I was new to the Rick and Morty thing. I killed all three seasons in, you know, like probably a couple weeks. So, you know, when I picked up the comics, it was fun. The Dungeons and Dragons, I know there's an ending. It's just one through four. So I don't have to like start committing to these books, which I mean, I guess I don't have to commit to any book, right? But uh, anyway, I was not a huge Dungeons and Dragons player. In fact, I wasn't a Dungeons and Dragons player. But this book uh, is very funny. It has all the weird Rick and Morty jump to different uh, dimensions. Of course, they're going to jump to a dimension that is Dungeons and Dragons specific. And it was good. It was funny. You should know what you're going to get. Uh, La LaGuardia, Nendi Okoa for. I feel like I've talked so much about this book before I read it, all the way up until I, you know, put it on the previews video. Uh, so it, it turned out to be pretty good. Uh, I'm real happy that it involves Nigeria, so, a, you know, a different country than England or America, you know, and then the occasional Canada, random European uh, country. So there's uh, New York, obviously it's called LaGuardia, and then uh, a Nigerian component in it. Uh, a lot of a lot of lighthearted alien stuff. It's only the first issue, so... I don't, there's no judging good or bad. The, the book was good and I'm going to continue to buy it. And uh, Nenendi Okafor is, as I've said before, very good at the novelette. That's where I know her from. So once she gets the, once she really, really gets the, uh, the storytelling down with pictures, you know, and not do a whole bunch of, not need a whole bunch of, of words and boxes, then uh, she's going to hit it off. And saying that was the problem with Shuri so far. This book actually does it real well. The art is beautiful, and, and she lets the story be told through the art um, uh, very well. With, you know, there's a lot of conversation and a lot of dialogue, but that's okay. Uh, Bitter Root. Here's another book uh, that is something that I imagine will get those comic skate people mad. So this one is, you know, this one wears the sort of anti-racism thing on its, you know, on its shoulder just very clearly. I forgot my cliche analogy there. But it's it's a great action book and a great fantasy book all rolled up into one. And the setting is really cool. 1920s Harlem is actually a very cool setting. And I enjoyed this book a lot and, and where it's going. Um... I do normally like to read the back matter, you know, it is a lot more political, uh, but I haven't read this back matter yet. When when I get around to, you know, rereading an entire arc, I'll probably hit up the back, the back matter too. Outer Darkness. So, we're to issue two now. This is definitely not what I expected in this book. I did expect more of a horror theme rather than a, like a cartoony horror, but it's still imaginative. I think even though it's nothing like Saga, in fact, it's not even close, uh, I think that there will be some comparisons to it, and I'm going to make those comparisons. Where Saga was, you know, Saga had a, if you needed to go into space opera, Saga had a Star Wars feel with its own, you know, crazy characters, right? Real imaginative, crazy side characters, you know, alligators or maids and TV robot heads and stuff. Now, Outer Darkness takes more of an element from Star Trek, but has the same wild and, and sort of weird, crazy, dark characters. They're, they're more, like, dark, but they don't look that dark because the art style, uh, Afu Chan's art style, is uh, just very cartoon, which is fine. 
But when they weren't, when they were calling it, when the solicits were calling it Star Trek meets Event Horizon, you expected something very silency and something dark and horror, right? What it is, really is is Star Trek meets the anime bed version of Event Horizon. Is like me what it looks like to me. Ah, this book heavily marketed and by a very popular author from the uh, old Warren Ellis uh, Warren Ellis forum days, internet forum days, which uh, Image just released an incredible uh, history of, just an article that you can find, which is really cool. Kelly Sue DeConnick, Matt Fraction, Warren Ellis, a couple other guys that are famous now in the comic book world and have won a bunch of awards. So Kieran Gillen is that. Wicked and Divine is ending. Die is beginning. And the book was fine. You know, it's a first issue. I, we already sort of knew where it was going. The book essentially was the solicit with, you know, with the, with the exception of the ending that, you know, was a hook, but it wasn't that surprising. I think what's going to, uh, what's going to make or break this book is after a few issues are out and it's, you know, the, the, the marketing hype has died is not whether Kieran Gillen makes a good book. There's always going to be people that are going to stay on books because of him, especially with those huge Wicked and Divine fans. I think what's going to make or break this book as something that's classic or something that goes on is, is whether people enjoy this art style. Now, it's a heavy, painted, beautiful you know art style that you could tell takes a lot of work, a lot of shadowing. Um, it is beautiful, but what I'll say about it and we'll see how it goes, is that it does, to me, the art style feels beautiful, but for whatever reason, somewhat impersonal, you know? So we'll see. I'm going to keep buying it because I know Kieran Gillen's great, and I also know that the way I read comic books, I like it when those art styles take a, you know, take a left turn or a weird turn and... And it ends up, the art style ends up really defining the comic. The best example for that is Jeff Lemire's Descender, where I don't think anyone would like that art style if they read the first issue or if they just flip through it. But then as you, you know, as you get into the second trade, as you get into the third trade or, or arcs later on, you realize that that art style really influences the way you see the world building and what the writer has made. And, uh, and I think that's what's going to happen here. Um, I'm not super familiar with Stephanie Hans. I don't know what else she's done or, or if I am familiar with her. I can't remember something that she's done at this moment. Uh, more image books. This is Prodigy by Mark Millar. I really wish I would have gotten the, the Virgin variant because it, you know, that's just a cool, to me, it's a cool cover. Um, this reminds me, uh, just, you know, story-wise, not characters or drawings or anything, of One Punch Man, the the manga, which I've only read the first version of. I think it's an online comic or something. But, and then to a certain extent, Superman. Because what those two are is you've made a protagonist that's so incredibly powerful, nothing can beat him, and he, things come easy to him. So that makes issues for storytelling, storytelling later on. And that's what Prodigy is. The guy's a prodigy. He could do a bunch of stuff. Uh, physically and mentally, and uh, I guess looking for challenges. So I'm sure the I'm sure Mark Millar has this great idea written out for the first four arcs or something like that, and I'm sure they're going to work fine. I think this book is already supposed to be a Netflix show, uh, but it's after that. Is the book supposed to stop? You know, you, you make a character too powerful, you know, then you you have issues. And I know Superman has made it that way, but it's one of the things that's never really got me super into Superman. Yeah, that was funny. So I better, you know, I if I want to get into Superman, I got to find like someone's great run and read it and see how I really feel about it. Where I would watch the TV shows and stuff like that. That's fine. Because I mean, the TV shows, Lois getting herself in trouble is new, right? How many Superman's been around since the 30s? Uh, next up is the aforementioned well, Warren Ellis and Jason Howard. This is uh, this conti this is just continuing to be what it what it has been in a, a crazy action comic, in a dystopia, with a with a sort of interdimensional sci-fi aspect to it over who's in which dimension or which home. Um, I love it. 
to be honest. I'm really happy with it. I'm happy with the, I mean, Jason Howard has like this newsprint style sort of art, artwork in there. And the coloring really sets the tone because um, the art is very simple, but they almost look like they stayed pencils. Um, you know, have that real sketch, that real sketch look, you know, but the colors on every page just, just help it stick out. And in a book that is supposed to be very, you know, drab, the world they're in, at least in the first three issues, is very drab. The the way the coloring works and the shading really, really makes certain areas pop, especially when the drawing's very flat. And not flat negative, but flat. I enjoy it and it helps the style. As a style, it's it's flat. You know, it doesn't things don't have to be vibrant and beautiful all the time. Um, that Jeff Lemire book I just mentioned is like that. And last but not least, I won't talk too much about this. This is self-made number one from Image Comics. Um, so I don't want to talk a lot about it because it's an easy spoiler. But uh, this is a this issue was a great sort of like fantasy piece, but it, it really had the feel to me of, really had the feel to me of fantasy based on like a, like 300 era Persian, you know, when Persians were taking over things like, like that era, like early, like BC era, except fantasy. So fantasy influenced by that. Um, the main character is pretty cool. And, you know, there's a, there was enough weirdness and magic, like that guy, there's enough weirdness and magic that kept me interested. And then the last page is pretty important in this, uh, to make you real, to make you know, if you would want to continue with this book. Anyway, those are all the indie books I had. I, I always go like 17 minutes. I wish I didn't, but I did. Uh, this is, my name is Chris Sarda, not part of your scene. Find me at not part of your scene on Instagram. Thank you for watching Lightning Reviews.